Welcome to this first knowledge clip on the subject of international law. In this clip, you will receive an introduction into subjects. So we will go into the question of what is a subject of international law? Uh, why does it matter? How can you recognize these? Then we'll actually look at the subject and how they came into being as a subject of international law. And we end with some final remarks. First of all, the subject of international law relates to the question who is somebody in the field of international law and then naturally also who isn't. If you look at the book then you see that the question that is posed to determine what is the subject of international law is this one. Does an entity enjoy direct rights or obligations under international law? And if yes, it is probably a subject of international law to the extent of those rights and obligations it received through international law. So does that make things clearer? Um, probably not. So we can also approach this whole topic from another direction. Subjects of international law um, contain international legal personality. So they are international legal persons. Person comes from the Latin persona, and persona refers to the masks that actors wore when they were on stage. So these masks, they indicated the role um, that a certain actor was playing. So uh, who has a role to play on the stage of international law? Well, of course, um, the cast of international law consists of a lead character, and that lead character is the state. Then there are also supporting roles, supporting actors, and these are the international organizations and individuals. But in any film you have a whole bunch of extras, and these extras you do not usually see with their names in the titles. Uh, these extras in international law, these can be for example NGOs, uh, humanity as a whole, peoples, um, um, armed groups. So these extras are not yet prominent enough on the stage to be actually called a subject of international law. And therefore, the subjects are the states. And not only states as a group, but also individual states. So you can say, for example, that Belgium is a subject of international law or that Egypt is a subject of international law, and even Nauru, small as it is, is a subject of international law. And international organizations, but not only international organizations at a category, but also individual international organizations can be considered as subjects of international law. And finally, the individuals, but not individuals only as a group are subjects of international law, but you can also say that Donald is a subject of international law, Vesti is subject of international law, Yolanda is subject of international law. So the origins. Um, states were for a very, very long time the dominant players in international law, because international law only existed through and because of the states. And states had the capacity to make and execute international law. And for a very long time there were hardly any exceptions perhaps, for example, the Holy See. But states were setting up international organizations, and these organizations were driven by the states. But they also received their own competences and developed these own competences. And they had their own rights and obligations. And they also had a separate legal personality from that of the states. And also individuals they live in the states. Um, they were for a long time represented on the international sphere by their governments. But they have um, obtained the level of subject of international law through certain developments um, in international law. For example, international humanitarian law, international criminal law, and international human rights law. Um, and for example, international criminal law um, now shows that through the International Criminal Court, um, individuals can be tried for international crimes. So as a consequence, um, you see that states are the primary subjects of international law, 
and international organizations and individuals are subjects, but are only subjects by the virtue of states and through states. And it means that not all subjects have the same capacities, obligations to choose rights. So it is basically depending on the subject itself what um, capacities it has. Only states have the full uh, capacity in international law. Some final points to make here. There is no general law on subjects of international law. Um, and it is a very developing field of international law. Uh, it's constantly moving. So there's no um, clear set of criteria that you can use to determine what is subject of international law. And it is possible that in time we, for example, will recognize uh, NGOs or peoples as being subjects of international law. If you want to know more about states, uh, please watch the second knowledge clip on subjects of international law. And if you want to know more about international organizations and individuals, please watch the third clip.